It was a lonely summer night, and I was feeling hungry. There is a Wendy's outlet a few blocks distance from my apartment. I grabbed my keys and wallet and headed out for food. The Wendy's happened to be the only place open that night, so I didn't have much of a choice. The passing cars barely noticed me as I walked through the shadowy sidewalks. There was no one else in the streets at that time. I was about to take a left turn when I stopped right in front of a narrow alley. The entire alley was dimly lit with a single street bulb. The end of it was very dark and I could barely see anyone. But I stopped, hearing voices coming from there. It was like two people were talking in a very low voice. I paid attention to understanding what they were saying, but I couldn't understand a word. Suddenly, I heard footsteps and saw two people slowly appearing from the darkness. Once they came under the yellow light, I saw their faces. An old man and woman were standing in the narrow alley. They stared at me blankly and took me a moment to realize I was prying on them. Out of awkwardness, I immediately walked away before I could get a proper glance. I ignored what had just happened and entered the Wendy's. The employee was dozing off, sitting behind the counter. I walked to him and rang the bell kept on the counter. He sprung from his drowsy state and asked, Um, welcome to Wendy's. May I take your order, sir? Yeah, I'll have a chicken Caesar wrap with medium fries and a chocolate frosty to go with. I'll have two bacon cheeseburgers, ten-piece chicken nuggets, two strawberry lemonades, and two double chocolate chip cookies. I almost had a heart attack as the old man appeared beside me unexpectedly. When did he get in? The entire time he gave his order, he was just staring at me. His bloodshot eyes scanned me like a vulture. For a few seconds, I forgot to talk. I came back to my senses when the Wendy's employee said, I'll be right back with your order, sir. Just give me a second to proceed with the first order. Make it quick. Saying this, he looked behind my shoulder and blew a kiss. Following his eyes, I saw that old woman sitting at the table and smiling at him. Hey, haven't you seen a pretty woman before? Sorry, what? You know what? Stop staring at my wife, you jerk. What the? Without waiting for my answer, he went to his table and sat down with his wife. I was so shocked by this weird couple that I stood there clueless for a few seconds. Let alone beautiful, his wife looked horrible. She had two teeth at her upper jaw and four and five on the lower one. Considering their huge order, I started having doubts about how she is even going to finish all that food. The old woman had no eyebrows, which made her face look even creepier. Her blue eyes stood still like a dead fish. Both of their clothes were dirty and stinky. It wasn't hard to guess that they had led a very unhygienic life. The man, on the other hand, had a roughly shaved beard and a criminal body language. I sat down at the table opposite them and started watching them. They looked so much in love. The man grabbed her hand and kissed it by licking it in a very disgusting way, and the old woman chuckled like an 18-year-old being wooed. Stop it. We're not in our bedroom anymore, Jack. Well, if we're together, the world can be our bedroom, Rose. <laughs> Don't be so naughty, darling. Seriously? Jack and Rose? This is what their names are? I was beyond disgusted with this couple. But there are all kinds of people in this world, and Wendy's are a public restaurant, so I had to endure their presence. They went on with their over-the-top expression of how much they physically wanted each other. In one word, they were gross. A few moments later, our food got served. I took a bite of my chicken wrap and watched them with the corner of my eyes. The old woman's eyes sparkled seeing all that food on her table. She started drooling and wiping the saliva off her mouth with her dirty sleeves. Look at you. You are so hungry. Yes, I am. I am. Feed me. Feed me. <laughs> with pleasure. <laughs> what happened next? I don't think anyone would have been prepared for that. The man took a big gulp of the strawberry lemonade and then went close to his wife. The woman opened her mouth widely and he poured the drink into her mouth. I was shocked. So was the Wendy's employee sitting behind the counter. Wow, this is so tasty. 
It tastes even better when I drink it from your mouth. (laughs) The man smiled big, like he was proud of himself as a man. Then he took a big bite of that cheeseburger and started chewing vigorously. The woman drooled again, seeing him eating that, but she didn't take a single bite by herself. I guess because of her teeth, she wasn't able to. After a few seconds of chewing, the man again went close to his wife, and this time, the man did an even more disgusting thing. He transferred the gooey mixture of chewed food and saliva into her mouth, and the woman couldn't wait to eat it. Her eyes closed in joy while she ate the food from her husband's mouth. Mmm, mmm, so delicious. For the next few minutes, they kept eating like this. The man chewed the food for her and then transferred it into her mouth. I obviously couldn't eat my food after seeing them pull off this sickening behavior. Suddenly, the old woman looked at me with angry eyes and said, Hey, what are you looking at? Don't you have your food to eat? Out of rage and disturbance, I uttered in a low voice, As if anyone could eat in front of you guys, crazy psychos. What did you call us? The old man got up from his table and screamed at me. By that time, my tolerance level was exceeded too. So, I stood up to leave while saying, I said exactly what you heard. I turned around to leave when the man grabbed my t-shirt from behind and pulled me closer. I wasn't expecting him to lay his hands on me, but it happened so quickly that I forgot to react. I was standing face to face with him when he spat on my face. Oh, what the hell? (laughs) Enjoy your dessert. I wiped my face and then punched him in the eye to free myself from him. Getting a strong punch, he fell on the floor. Oh my god, Jack, are you alright? Why did you do that? Because he spat on my face, you sick woman. Jack, get up! The Wendy's employee came rushing at the couple, and I walked away without giving a damn about them. I could hear the woman cursing me on my way to the exit. You'll burn in hellfire. You'll die a horrible death, you jerk. I turned around for one last time and said, Once Jack dies, which he surely will, I wonder who's going to feed you, Rose. Her face turned pale hearing my words, and I left. That was the last time I went to the Wendy's near my house. I barely go out at night after this traumatic experience. So, to the creepy Jack and Rose, wherever you are, please use home delivery as your eating option or you will be beaten up several times. Hey guys, I hope you're enjoying the video. If so, please leave a like. And also, a small percentage of people that watch my videos are actually subscribed. If you want to support this channel and make this channel reach the 1 million mark, please consider subscribing. It's free, and you can change your mind later. Enjoy. It used to be common in my routine to go to fast food restaurants for dinner. My work at the office was long and tedious, so at the end of the day, I was usually very hungry and without the energy to cook anything when I arrived at the apartment where I lived alone. That's where I decided to eat something quick and easy, hamburgers, pizza, fried chicken, and many others. Generally, my options were varied, or at least they were for a time. Months before the incident, I was presented with the job opportunity at another company, but there was one very important detail about it. I had to move. Still, I decided that this job was more suitable for me than the other one, and I accepted it. Everything was going perfectly, just as I expected, until the end of my first day of work. As usual, I looked for a place to have dinner. That's when I realized there was only one nearby, a Wendy's. It was almost six o'clock when I walked in and waited for my turn in line. It was a pleasure. Enjoy your burger. Meanwhile, I was listening to a kind person speak. Client after client, the voice said a few cheerful words in an energetic way. When my turn finally came, I could see who that person was, the Wendy's employee in charge of taking orders. He was a young boy, blonde and thin, with freckles that made him look friendly. Good evening. What's your order? Let me tell you what we have a promotion of. The young man took my order while always having a big smile on his face. Thanks. Um... On his uniform tag, it said, Jeremy. Thanks, Jeremy. It was a pleasure. Enjoy every crumb of your burger. Initially, I found his attitude quite pleasant. 
as even if I had eaten in many such restaurants, the vast majority of employees didn't have the friendliness and energy that Jeremy had. He certainly seemed to really like his work. In the following days, I kept going to Wendy's, even if it was my only option. I enjoyed it, as I was treated excellently, and the food tasted good. Good evening! Oh, it's you again, sir! At some point, Jeremy seemed to notice that I went to the place every day. Walter. My name is Walter. Nice to have you here again, Walter. After saying that, the employee made a strange face, as if he was making fun of me, but he quickly refocused on my order. Good luck with your food, Walter. Jeremy's comment this time seemed strange to me. It wasn't what the young man used to say. Why would he wish me luck? I tried to tell myself that it wasn't that important, but I couldn't get it out of my mind. Not even while I was eating. Before finishing the burger, I began to watch Jeremy closely. As the seconds passed, I realized something. That employee was always smiling, even when he was talking or when no one was in line. The boy had a big smile on his face, but that wasn't the worst discovery. When he had already taken everyone's orders, and while waiting on more clients, Jeremy began to observe the entire place. He looked at each of the clients and made me understand why he was able to notice that I went to the place every day. Suddenly, his gaze focused on me, but what scared me was what he did next. The boy widened his smile even more. What bothered me so much was that even though I hadn't finished dinner, I got up from my seat and left the place. I didn't look back, since the last thing I wanted was to see his disturbing smile. The weekend passed, and with it came Monday. After work, I went to Wendy's and parked in the front of the place for a few minutes. I couldn't deny that Jeremy made me uncomfortable, but that was the only place nearby where I could eat dinner, so I decided to ignore him. Good evening, Walter. I tried to look at him as little as possible, but anyway, I started to get uncomfortable with his disturbing smile. With a lump in my throat, I asked for my order. This time, eat even the smallest crumb. Taste everything, Walter everything. Enjoy it. What he said, in addition to making me extremely uncomfortable, made me sick. I felt an acid build up in my throat, and all of a sudden, I threw up everything inside of me. The floor of the Wendy's was covered in dense green vomit. I coughed a couple of times before speaking. Enough! Cancel my order! Cancel it! I don't want anything to do with the food in this place! But Walter... For the first time, Jeremy's smile disappeared from his face. His eyes were filled with resentment, but I couldn't care less about it. I walked out of there without saying anything else. The following days, I started cooking my own dinner, even though it was tiring for me. Unfortunately, one Thursday, something unexpected happened. Some problems had occurred, and I had to stay at work for several hours more. When I left, it was very late. I was extremely hungry, and what was worse, I hadn't gone to buy food so I couldn't prepare anything at home. When I saw Wendy's, I literally had to force myself to go. Of course, Jeremy was there. Walter, you said you wouldn't come back. Before the boy could say anything else to me, I told him what I would eat and went to sit in the opposite direction from him so I wouldn't have to see him. As I waited, I noticed several employees leaving, which made me uneasy. When I was telling myself that the food would be delivered soon and I would leave, even though I forgot to pay, I felt a strong blow to my head that made me pass out. The cold was what woke me up. The room I was in seemed to be the Wendy's kitchen. For some reason, it had several open refrigerators, which gave me goosebumps. I tried to get up, but my feet were tired as well as my hands. Just as I became aware of the pain in the back of my head, someone came in. It was Jeremy. Hey, Walter. I knew you would come back. Guess what? I brought you something. The smiling young man showed me the tray he was carrying in his hands. There was a hamburger on it. Your favorite. This time, I'll make sure you eat it all. What the fuck do you think you're doing? Untie me. Jeremy's smile disappeared when he heard me. You're being ungrateful, Walter. I won't let you go until you eat everything. Understand? Everything. Why would I do that? Let me go, you crazy asshole. I won't eat your crap. In response, 
Jeremy reached for an object that was on the table behind him. He soon pointed the knife at me. Eat, or I won't hesitate to use this, Walter. Eat. The boy grabbed the hamburger and brought it to my mouth, but I moved as far away as I could. Are you crazy? You want to kill me just for not eating a stupid hamburger? <laughs> no, I want to see if you would eat it because it's satisfying. <laughs> Walter, <laughs> you stupid people eat anything and don't even realize what's in it. <laughs> I remained silent, having no idea what he was talking about. Dust, dirt, saliva, vomit, urine, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> it makes me feel so good. <laughs> but you, you defy me. What? What the fuck is wrong with you, you sick fuck? Eat it, Walter. Eat it. Show me you're inferior to me. <laughs> as disgusting as it was to distract the motherfucker, the best option was to eat some of the burger. So I opened my mouth and took a bite. I chewed several times as fast as I could, trying not to taste it. Meanwhile, Jeremy was looking at me unblinkingly. It was the right time. I brought my legs together and hit him as hard as I could. The boy fell to the ground, as I expected. At that moment, I took the burger with both hands and rubbed it against his face. Then I grabbed the knife and got untied. Before he could get up, I left the room and closed it, locking him in. Shortly after, I called the police. Currently, the investigation is ongoing. I hope they can find proof of what Jeremy was doing so he can get what he deserves. In the meantime, I don't care how hungry I feel, I'll never eat fast food again. It was a Monday morning and I was coming back from my job interview. I assume it went well since they were looking for a very serious but social profile that can serve as a cashier but not be distracted by the coworkers or customers. I immediately identified myself with the profile since I am very reserved and I don't tend to lose my concentration. But this was not always the case. At the age of 11, I was a very playful and hyperactive boy. My parents were very permissive, but they always told me that my curiosity would get me into trouble if I didn't learn to control it. I never took them seriously, but that traumatic Thursday afternoon would not only prove them right, but would change my life forever. It was Halloween night, and the parents of a classmate had invited me to Wendy's before we went trick-or-treating. David wasn't my friend. In fact, he treated me very badly, but the parents were very wealthy and had invited the whole class and my parents, who barely had enough to feed me, didn't want to miss the opportunity for me to eat something tasty. The afternoon continued to progress as we ate. We noticed that apart from the burger, they were serving a Halloween special. It was a red drink with a strange taste that we could not decipher. It also had an eye attached to it, which was very similar to that of a human or maybe an animal. Can you tell us what that drink is made of? David asked an employee with a very serious face. I'm sorry, kid, but that's a secret. After saying this, he approached us and spoke in a soft voice. But just because I like you guys, you want to be told the secret? Yes, please, I screamed in desperation, while David gave me a bad look for stealing his spotlight. Well, but keep it a secret. The drink is made of human blood, animal eyes, and most importantly, children like you. He shouted this last part, to which all the children were frightened. The man's face was truly terrifying. It looked like he was serious, but after a few seconds, he laughed and returned to his normal composure. Oh, I'm sorry. That's the old recipe. The new recipe is made of cherry juice and candy. The children were still scared, but when they saw David's mother laughing, <laughs> they calmed down and they all laughed. A few minutes later, we were playing on the playground and I was having fun, going from game to game, taking advantage of one of the few times I could go to Wendy's. I was having so much fun that I didn't realize I was surrounded by five kids, led by David, who'd locked up against the wall and grabbed me by the neck. What are you doing? Let me go. Shh. If you scream, I'll hit you here and now. Understand? In response, I just nodded. Okay, now pay attention to me, poor boy. Your mom told mine to keep an eye on you because you're so curious. You know what? You're going to have to be curious today or we'll beat you up here at the school. 
got it? Yeah, I get it. What do you want from me? Let go of my neck, you're hurting me. It makes me sick that we share the same air. What you're going to do is infiltrate the kitchen and find out if Wendy's secret ingredient really is human meat. I can't do that. I'll get in trouble. You're already in trouble. You have been since you decided to come to my birthday party and eat my food. If you don't, not only will we all beat you up, but I'll also accuse you of stealing my mom's phone. Is that clear to you, poor boy? All right. Within minutes, I was sneaking into the Wendy's kitchen. David told me that if I didn't find out if the secret recipe was made from humans, not only would I get beaten up, but he would accuse me of stealing his mom's cell phone. I had no choice but to go, and although I was sure I would be scolded at best, I admit I was a little scared. As I walked into the Wendy's kitchen, I could see the burgers being cooked and the fries were being made, but nowhere did I see any sign of the drink. I was afraid that David and the other guys would leave Wendy's without me, so I was quite anxious and desperate to finish as soon as possible, although I must admit that inside I was enjoying it. Looking around, I discovered that all the drinks were coming out of a brown door at the back of the kitchen, so taking advantage of my height, I managed to get in. When I entered, terror gripped me. The main table was full of blood, and eyes were scattered all over the room. The employees were nervously cleaning everything up quickly and putting their eyes together, like candy. I could even see one of them gnawing at his eye and hiding it in his pocket. I tried to scream, but quickly covered my mouth and kept hiding. At that moment, and to my surprise, a small hand slapped my head from behind. It was David, who had also gone into the kitchen. He didn't explain to me what he was doing there. He just remained silent, but I assumed that curiosity had forced him to explore as well. Whatever the case may be, the shock was too great, and I let out a dry scream. So immediately, several employees turned in our direction. Luckily for me, I was quickly able to hide under a shelf, and they didn't see me leaving only David exposed. Furious, an employee grabbed David by the arm. Please don't kill me and gouge my eyes out. I, I didn't do anything wrong. I promise. Surprised, all the employees laughed, and to the relief of little Freddy Krueger, they show him that it was not blood, but a mixture of raspberry and grenadine. The eyes were nothing more than special candies they had acquired for Halloween, and they even gave him a taste of one. Are you calmer now, kid? Yes, I'm sorry, but the eyes looked very real. <laughs> That's why we have so many customers, buddy. Well, I'll have to go with my mom now. Sorry to bother you. I was surprised by how innocent this good little kid appeared to be. I was surprised that he didn't reveal my position, but I was probably afraid he would talk. Unfortunately, we can't let you go, boy. Now that you know our secret recipe, you must stay here. When David was about to ask what those words meant, the Wendy's employee slammed his head violently against the wall. Confused by the blow, David tried to stand up, but quickly fell to the floor, while the other workers approached with knives. I recognized the cashier who had served us so well a few minutes before, but now he was putting a tablecloth in David's mouth. With the boy still conscious, the rest of the workers began to cut off his limbs with butcher knives, as if the boy who was still in costume was some kind of dead animal. I felt like I wanted to cry out, to scream, to do anything to wake up from that nightmare. But I just kept quiet, biting my lips and waiting for the opportunity to escape. A few minutes later, I heard how the cashier sent the kitchen staff to put the dead child's limbs in the freezer, and while they were all distracted, I took the opportunity and escaped. When I returned, no one noticed that I was crying, since everyone was looking for David. I felt the urge to tell them everything that had happened, but a part of me just couldn't, as I couldn't utter a single word out of fear. At the same time that the cashier was comforting the mother and telling her that they were going to look for the young man, I felt her gaze pointed straight at me, piercing my soul and telling me that I had to keep quiet. Did they know that I saw them? Or was it just my imagination? In the same way, that night, I decided to keep quiet, and then it turned into days, weeks, months, and years. Even today, the violent noise of my cell phone brought me out of my memories and brought me back to reality. It was from the job where I had just done the interview. 
the manager was congratulating me since I was going to start working next week. After explaining to me the procedure of the contract signing, the man closed the conversation with some cold but determined words. Before you start working with us, I must warn you that at Wendy's, we must keep company secrets at all costs. And we expect you to do the same. Welcome to the family. As I hung up the call, I just smiled. I was finally going to meet people who would treat me like family. I might even thank them for what they did to David. Because if they hadn't killed him, I might have done it myself.